Lesson 31, Popularity of Jesus. In today's lesson, we shall see how Jesus became very popular with the general public, but despised by the religious authorities in Jerusalem. While the common people flocked to Jesus to be healed and to hear his teaching, the rulers were increasing their plans to oppose him and even kill him. We will learn that Jesus' work of casting out Satan was ironically attributed to Satan and why this false accusation is considered blasphemy and will not be forgiven. When Jesus went into a synagogue on the Sabbath day, he miraculously healed a man who had a withered hand. The Pharisees were there waiting to see if Jesus would heal on the Sabbath, so they might have something to accuse him of. Jesus asked the congregation whether it was lawful to do good or evil on the Sabbath day, to save life or to kill. But the crowd remained quiet. Jesus was angry because of the hardness of their hearts. They only wanted to find some reason to accuse him of doing wrong and were not at all interested in the man with a withered hand. So instead of praising God for a wonderful miracle, these Pharisees actually plotted how they would kill Jesus. It is sad when our religious devotion becomes more important to us than the people we are supposed to love and serve through our faith. Religious zeal mixed with pride becomes the devil's workshop and results in hypocrisy and spiritual blindness. Jesus left that area and went to the sea, and great crowds of people came to him to be healed and to hear him teach. There were so many pressing around him, he had to tell his disciples to prepare a boat so he could escape the crush of the crowd if necessary. Jesus had something to offer that no one else could offer, and that was divine healing. The people were desperate for help, and so they came to Jesus. This shows us how all the religious leaders and all their religion were really powerless to provide what the people really needed. So much of religion is just dead religion. For while it offers elaborate rituals, ornate buildings, and appealing music, it still remains empty of divine power. It is the Holy Spirit who gives power to heal people both physically and more importantly spiritually. Men might try to fake the work of the Spirit or invoke the powers of demons in order to attract followers, but it is only God who in his sovereignty can work miracles and healings through the power of the Holy Spirit. The only man who has ever been given the Holy Spirit without restriction was Jesus and so he was able to heal all that came to him. Lots of men claim they have the anointing power of the Holy Spirit and that God uses them to heal. I wish some of these who make such claims would visit the local hospital and use their divine gift to heal where it is most needed. It seems a bit suspicious that these so-called healers operate at special healing services where there are plenty of cameras and witnesses to attract as much publicity as possible and then ask the supporters to send their gifts and offerings. Jesus never made a show out of his miracles or charged for his services. In fact, when the demons recognized his identity and cried out that he was the Son of God, Jesus rebuked them and silenced them. This leads us to another important discussion in this chapter of Mark's Gospel. The scribes had come to Jesus and made an accusation that he had an unclean spirit and that it was by the power of the prince of demons that Jesus was casting out demons. This was ridiculous, of course, and Jesus explains why this did not make any sense. For if Satan had power over individuals, through the demons living inside them, then why would he cast them out? That would be like shooting yourself in the foot. It would not help Satan to destroy his own kingdom. Only one who was stronger than Satan could come and bind him and cast him out. Jesus was demonstrating by his power to cast out demons that his power was greater than that of Satan. This should have told the scribes and Pharisees who Jesus really was, but they still refused to believe. 
They made a grave error when they accused Jesus of having a demon and casting out demons by the power of Satan. They were attributing the work of God through the Holy Spirit to the work of the devil. This is what Jesus called the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. He further tells them that if anyone blasphemes the Holy Spirit, they will never be forgiven. This is what some have called the unpardonable sin. Christians today sometimes worry that they might have been guilty of committing this sin and therefore might never be forgiven. We should realize, however, that this sin was committed by those who witnessed the miracles of Jesus and attributed those works to the devil rather than to the Holy Spirit. By this accusation, they were really calling the Holy Spirit the devil. Most Bible scholars would agree that this particular sin against the Holy Spirit was only possible to commit by those who witnessed the miracles that Jesus performed. So Christians today should not worry that they might have committed this sin. However, we should all be warned to show due respect to the true work of God. In discerning the true work of God, we need only to look at the fruit which it produces. In Jesus' case, people were being healed and released from Satan's power, indicating that his works were from the Holy Spirit. Today when we see those who claim to be working for God, exploiting the poor so they can be rich and live in luxury, then we can discern their work is not being conducted by the Holy Spirit. If they were true followers of Jesus, they would deny themselves and not lay up for themselves treasures upon the earth. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. Mark chapter 3 verse 29.